Hey guys, welcome back to another installment of me, Mr. McIntyre, reading Stuart Little. I hope that you guys have been doing very well. The question of the day is, what three things are you most looking forward to this summer? So get your pencil out, get your paper out, write that down, your three favorite things. So last week, we read chapter 8 of Stuart Little. Today, we're going to read chapter 9. So let's get started. Uh, the title is A Narrow Escape. Sounds pretty epic. Anyway, let's begin. Again, chapter nine, A Narrow Escape. Margot, li Margot liked it so well at the Littles' house, she decided to stay for a while instead of returning to the open country. She and Stuart became fast friends, and as the days passed, it seemed to Stuart that she grew more and more beautiful. He hoped she would never go away from him. One day, when Stuart had recovered from bronchitis, he took his new skates and put on his ski pants and went out to look for an ice pond. He didn't get that far. The minute he stepped out into the street, he saw an Irish terrier, which is a type of dog. So he had to shinny up an iron gate and jump into a garbage can where he had hid in a grove of celery. While he was there waiting for the dog to go away, a garbage truck from the Department of Sanitation drove up to the curb and two men picked up the can. Stuart felt himself being hoisted high in the air. He peered over the side and saw that in an instant he and everything in the can would be dumped into the big truck. If I jump now, I'll kill myself, thought Stuart. So he ducked back into the can and waited. The men threw the can with a loud bump into the truck, where another man grabbed it, turned it upside down, and shook everything out. Stuart landed on his head, buried too deep in wet, slippery garbage. Ugh! All around him was garbage smelling strong. Oh, this is getting gross. Under him, over him, on all four sides of him, garbage. Just an enormous world of garbage and trash and smell. It was a messy spot to be in. Ugh, he had an egg in his, on his trousers, butter on his cap, gravy on his shirt, orange pulp in his ear, ugh, and banana peel wrapped around his waist. This is really gross. Still hanging on to his skates, Stuart tried to make his way up to the surface of the garbage, but his footing was bad. He climbed a pile of coffee grounds, but near the top of the grounds gave way under him and he slid down and landed in a pool of leftover rice pudding. I bet I'm going to be sick to my stomach before I get out of this, thought Stuart, said Stuart. He was anxious to work his way up to the pile, up to the top of the pile because he was afraid of being squashed by the next can load of garbage. When at last he did succeed in getting to the surface, tired and smelly, he observed that the truck was not making any more collections, but was rumbling rapidly along. Stuart glanced up at the sun. We're going east, he said to himself. I wonder what that means. Pause. Uh, see if you can figure out which way is east. Um, if you're facing, um, let's say, um, we've got east, west, north, and south. If you were to point to your right and your left, which side do you think east is on? Anyway, just trying to pick your brain, see if you guys know your east from your wests and your north, norths from your souths. So, anyway, there was no way for him to get out of this truck. The sides were too high. He just had to wait. When the truck arrived at the East River, which borders New York City on the east, which is a rather dirty but useful river, the driver drove out onto the pier, backed up to the garbage scow, and dumped his load. Stuart went crashing and slithering along with everything else and hit his head so hard he fainted and lay quite still as though dead. He lay that way for almost an hour, but when he recovered his senses, he looked about him and saw nothing but water. The scow was being towed out to the sea. Well, thought Stuart, this is about the worst thing that could ever happen to anybody. I guess this will be my last ride in this world. 
for he knew that the garbage would be towed 20 miles out and dumped into the Atlantic Ocean. I guess there's nothing I can do about it, he thought hopelessly. I'll just have to sit here bravely and die like a man. But I wish I didn't have to die with egg on my pants and butter on my cap and gravy on my shirt and orange pulp in my ear and a banana peel wrapped around my middle. That is kind of a terrible way to go, I guess. <laughs> the thought of death made Stuart sad, and he began to think of his home and of his father and mother and brother and of Margalo and Snowbell and of all and how he loved them all. All but Snowbell. <laughs> and of what a pleasant place his home was, especially in the early mornings, with the light just coming in through the curtains, and the house stirring and waking. The tears came into his eyes when he realized that he would never see them again. He was still sobbing with a small voice behind him whispered, Stuart. He looked around through tears, and there, sitting on a Brussels sprout, was Margalo! Margalo! cried Stuart. How did you get here? Well, said the bird, I was looking out the window this morning when you left home, and I happened to see you get dumped into the garbage truck. So I flew out the window and followed the truck, thinking you might need help. I've never been so glad to see anybody in my life, said Stuart. But how are you going to help me? I think if you'll just hang on to my feet, said Margalo, I can fly ashore with you. It's worth trying anyway. How much do you weigh? Three ounces and a half, said Stuart. With your clothes on, said Margalo. Certainly, certainly, replied Stuart modestly. Then I, can be then I believe I can carry you all right. Suppose I get dizzy, said Stuart. Don't look down, replied Margalo. Then you won't get dizzy. Suppose I get sick to my stomach. You'll just have to be sick, the bird replied. Anything is better than death. Yes, that's true, Stuart agreed. Hang on, then. We might as well get started. Stuart tucked his skates into his shirt, stepped gingerly onto a turf of lettuce, and took a firm grip on Margalo's Marvelo, ankles. All ready, he cried. With a flutter of wings, Margalo rose into the sky, carrying Stuart along and together they flew out over the ocean and headed towards home. Pee-you, said Margalo when they were high in the air. You smell awful, Stuart. I know I do, he replied gloomily. I hope it isn't making you feel bad. Ugh, I can hardly breathe, she answered, and my heart is pounding in my breast. Isn't there something you could do? You could drop off to make yourself lighter? Well, I could drop off these ice skates, said Stuart. Goodness me, the little bird cried. I didn't know you had ice skates hidden in your shirt. Toss those heavy skates away, quickly, or we'll, come, we'll both come down in the ocean and perish. Stuart threw his skates, whoosh, and watched them fall down till they disappeared in the gray waves below. That's better, said Margalo. Now we're all right. I can already see the towers and chimneys of New York. Fifteen minutes later, in they flew through the open window of the Little's living room and landed on the Boston Fern. Mrs. Little, who had left the window up when she missed Margalo, was glad to see them back, for she was beginning to worry. When she heard what had happened and how she had came so close to losing her son, she took Stuart in her hand even though his clothes smelled nasty, and kissed him. Then she sent him upstairs to take a bath and sent, sent George out to take Stuart's clothes to the cleaner. What was it like out there in the Atlantic Ocean? inquired Mr. Little, who had never been very far from home. So Stuart and, and Margalo told all about the ocean and the gray waves curling from the white crests and the gulls in the sky and the channel bios and the ships and the tugs, and the wind making a sound in your ears. Mr. Little sighed, and said some day he hoped to get away from business long enough to see all those fine little things. Everyone thanked Margalo for saving Stuart's life, and at supper time, Mrs. Little presented her with a tiny cake which had seeds sprinkled on top.
All right, boys and girls, thank you so much for following along this video. Uh, this was chapter nine. Um, today I'm going to attach a few things so you'll watch this video and you'll also follow along with the worksheet. So boys and girls, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye.